So I should have wrote static uh, type systems, which I'm going to talk about, but I just uh, wrote type systems, so now you know. Uh, disclaimer, uh, all of the stuff that I'm going to talk about already exists uh, in some programming languages you can find. However, another disclaimer is this is the future because these languages are mostly not used in the industry, unfortunately. Uh, also, a lot of people dislike static typing because it's a hurdle on their productivity. Uh, I'm not going to really go into depth on that, but there are languages where you can run uh, without the, the compiler, and then you can use the compiler kind of as a linter to check if everything is correct afterwards. So it can run on your build server, and you can uh, develop as if you didn't have to uh, you know, have a compiler. And also, uh, since I wanted uh, to make it more readable, don't focus too much on the syntax because I made some of it up. Uh, and I'm not a programming language designer. So the motivation for types that I'm going to talk about is bugs. Because sometimes bugs appear uh, in production. And then what do you do? Well, we fix the bug. And then we'll write more tests. So at least this bug doesn't happen next time. But then, well, the bugs happen again. Uh, in, in production to something else that we didn't test this time. And then we start making excuses like someone uh, was, gave a dumb name to this function that didn't make sense and I was misled. Or more tests will fix everything. Or, uh, well, we can't test everything. What do you want me to do? <laughs> so how do you actually know something is correct and strive for making a software that mostly works, because nothing is going to work every time, right? Uh, so uh, how do you uh, have the confidence that something works? If you have the confidence that it works because I'm the boss and I said so, it doesn't seem like you're going far. Uh, it's because reliable Bob, my teammate, said so, well, he's wrong a percentage of the time. Because the function name told me so, well, I don't know what software do you work with, but my function names are not always correct. Uh, because the comment told me so, you've probably heard of such a thing as uh, outdated documentation. Uh, because there's a test for it, now you're going somewhere, but the test usually is for a specific case, and then there's the case right next to it which was missed on the test, and then it doesn't work for that case. And then is the case that I like is because it would have not compiled otherwise which means the compiler would have catched this kind of, of mistake and you would not have shipped it into production. I'm not saying you can catch everything like this, but there's a lot of stuff that we, that we can. So now that I've given you the motivation for talking a little bit about types and how they can catch errors, let me show you a bit of what can be done with types. Uh, so there are the simple, uh, the simple types that, every, that everybody knows. So uh, val1 is an int and you can assign one to it. Uh, val uh, str is, is a string and you can assign a string to it. And some people don't like the boilerplate of writing types. Well, uh, if you don't know, some languages already infer them for you, so you don't need to write the type. The compiler will figure it out. So you don't have the hurdle of doing that. Uh, so uh, everybody already had a null pointer exception or some kind of null error blowing the program up. So one thing that exists already in some language is explicitly declaring which types are nullable. So in this case, one is, let's say, maybe an int or null, because it has this question mark afterwards. And then you can assign null to it. If it didn't have the question mark, then you couldn't assign null, and the compiler could check that out. So as I try to invoke a method uh, on one, uh, the compiler says no, because it might be null and it might blow up. So if you don't have a compiler to catch these kind of things, stuff will blow up uh, eventually. Uh, if, if you have, you can still call methods, and there's this Elvis operator, which means if not null, do this. So you don't really need to have a lot of boilerplate if your language covers that for you. And also string will be nullable because you might already have the null here. So it's basically synthetic sugar for doing if null this, uh, or else you know just keep the null. Uh, so another thing, uh, which, which I really enjoy, but and I, I wish more languages had these. So let's say I have cats and dogs in my system and they have IDs because I have a database and I have to query and stuff. Uh, so, but I record both of them 
uh, as integers, but still I would like to differentiate uh, cat identifiers and dog identifiers without having to actually create uh, new constructs in memory. Uh, so this can be thought of as type aliases, as in uh, underlying it's just an int, but we can pass them on different occasions. So the problem is if I have a function which washes the dog and receives an ID which is an int, I don't have guarantees of what int I'm passing there, so I might as well pass the cat ID and have Garfield take a bath, which was not intended. Uh, so if, if I have these, uh, these separate IDs, then the ID has to be a dog ID, and then I'm happy because I'm washing the dog instead of the cat. And if, if you think about it, since I will not be manipulating IDs due to their nature, I only need to convert it to an int when I'm at the boundaries of my program on serialization. So either uh, serializing or deserializing, that's when I need the conversion. And then on those places, I can make the conversion available. And throughout the rest of the program, there's no way to convert, so there's no way to make mistakes middle way. Uh, so yeah, this, as I've said, this already exists on some languages, and yes, I made the syntax up. Uh, and you can also use this kind of mechanism uh, to create uh, types that have additional, additional meaning, keeping the same, the same structure, uh, but with some caveats. Let's say I want a positive, a positive int. I could create an int and give it a constraint, and only when I'm trying to pass to an int, I might maybe use the nullable I gave before, or some, some, other, some other mechanism, which would mean that when I create a positive int, it can only be a positive int. And I could also have a type email where on creation I would, you know, validate if it uh, has the, the correct uh, regular expression to see if it's, if it's an email or else I couldn't return a type email. And, you know, when it compiled underlying, these types would not exist at runtime. It would just be, you know, a validation to try to make a more, uh, more correct program. Uh, but in runtime, it would just be a string all the way down. So you don't have performance overhead and that kind of thing, which might be important. Uh, so yeah, there's. So another thing, uh, these are called algebraic data types, and if you do functional programming, you've seen them in multiple languages. And uh, here I'm just making a new type pet. You can think of it as an interface, and then it can be it can be either a dog or a cat, using the same uh, kind of examples that I gave before. But this time I only made up names for them. Uh, and so this sealed keyword here means that I won't do uh, any additional uh, data types for pet which do not exist here. So there I can't you know, extend pet somewhere else in my program. And why would I want to seal the hierarchy right here? Uh, so basically if I feel like I have a single pet and my pet is lonely and I want, don't want to mix cat and dogs uh, because it might end up wrongly unless they're raised together. Uh, I can uh, do a pattern match or a switch uh, on the pet that I received, and if it's a cat, I get another cat, and if it's a dog, I get another dog, and I don't, don't mix them up. Uh, so what happens is uh, the usefulness of this being sealed is because the compiler can catch if I'm covering every case. So it's, it would not blow up for not having a default case and it can make sure that I'm covering all the cases and in some compilers this can be configured with a flag so in case you're interested in that behavior you can have it in case you're not you just can you know not pass the flag and not have it it's due to configuration so I have no idea how much time I already wasted I'm bad at eating at reading egg timers I guess uh, but there are a lot more types this is just the basics of it and you you, yeah, you can see a lot of way more complicated stuff. I just gave you hints for it. Uh, and uh, there's this tweet that came out this morning which I relate a lot to, which is when people say business logic bugs are on type errors, I want to show them how to make it into a type error so uh, the compiler can catch it and you don't make as much business logic errors. Because a lot of things don't seem convertible, but if the type system helps you, they are. And that was it. <laughs>